Hey everyone, Miss Rose here from the LaGrange Park Library to show you how to make a breakfast pizza. Now, this recipe is very flexible, so if you're if you don't eat meat, you can leave out anything that has meat to do with it. You can put whatever cheese you want, whatever toppings you want on it. Super easy. So, let's get started. To start, we are going to use our refrigerated pizza dough, which I've already gotten out. It's just one of these that you can find like in the refrigerated aisle. And then you're gonna put that on a, just a standard baking sheet, cookie sheet like this. We're gonna roll it out. First, you wanna grease the cookie sheet. Now, I just used this. You can also use butter, but you wanna make sure that you get up around the edges too. So this is, we're gonna roll this up around the edges. Probably need to move this back a little. Oops. And then you're probably just going to stretch it a little. It doesn't quite fit. So the nice thing about dough is that it does stretch. Now, if you wanted to make your own dough, you could do that too. There's plenty of recipes out there online. I just thought this is a nice, quick and easy recipe. If you want to make breakfast for your family, you don't have to eat this for breakfast. You can eat it for lunch, for dinner. A fun one. Okay, so put that all the way up around on our sides and we'll be good. And then what you want to do is we are going to um, poke it with a fork. This helps aerate the dough so that it doesn't puff up. Just take a fork and go all over. You could do it kind of in rows. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a little bit here. And then you might notice, I don't know if you can see, there's some spots where maybe it looks a little like the dough isn't stretching. Again, just push some dough back there, cover that up. And yeah, it's since it, the pan is greased, it might slide around a little. That is quite all right. And then we're gonna pre-bake this crust a little. And while we do that, we're gonna work on making a sausage gravy. Now, like I said, if you don't eat meat, you can leave this part out. Um, you can also just leave out the gravy altogether and just do your eggs, your toppings, your cheese, and be all set. Okay, that is good. So we are gonna bake this at 400 degrees and for about seven to eight minutes, depends on your oven. So I'm gonna set myself a timer so I don't forget for seven minutes. Okay. Now, we're gonna make this sausage gravy. I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Now, just got a regular nonstick pan. I'm gonna use my trusty pan spray. And at about medium heat, I have some pre-cooked sausage. This is chicken sausage. And it's already cooked, so I don't need to worry about it cooking. But if you're using raw sausage, you want to definitely make sure that that is fully cooked. Just going to let this warm up a little bit. And then we're going to add a little bit of flour to it. So... We're gonna do this gradually. This recipe calls for about a quarter cup of flour. This is gonna help thicken it up and turn it into a gravy. Now, if you're not a meat eater, you can make a gravy without any sausage at all, or there's plenty of vegetarian sausages out there that still have that flavor. Um, but it's really just, it's like salt and pepper, flour and milk are those main ingredients. So I'm gonna let this heat up. I'm gonna grab something to stir it with. And then you just always, of course, want to be careful when you are using heat or knives. I just chopped this up with a knife, so just be really careful using knives. Always check in with an adult before you do these things. And I'm just going to sprinkle this flour over my sausage. And I'm using a little bit less sausage because I'm, I'm not a huge meat person either. Um, so we might use a little less flour. Now, because the sausage is a little drier, because it's a chicken sausage, a pork sausage is gonna have more fat in it. 
um, we're probably going to start adding the milk a little early. If you're using a pork sausage, once it's fully cooked, you might want to let that flour kind of sop up the fat before adding the milk. But because this is a really low fat sausage, we are just going to add the milk. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it with the milk here, which can either can go really well or not so well. So we'll see. We're just going to do a little bit of everything at a time. So a little milk, a little sausage. I'm sorry, little milk, a little flour. The sausage is already there. So I don't know if you can tell, but it is already starting to thicken up. So generally, what happens when you add milk and flour together is called a roux. And that's just, it thickens things up. So this is just to give the pizza a little, so it's not so dry, because if you're just doing eggs and cheese and toppings, it might be a little on the dry side. So a little more milk. We just want to add a little bit of texture to it too, because otherwise you have all of these these few crunchy textures, the soft texture, this will help. Okay, and you can see it's thickening. You're getting a little bit of a sauce going. I probably could have cut this sausage even a little bit smaller generally if you if you've ever had biscuits and gravy. The sausage is a little bit more crumbly than this. This is like a link sausage, but it's what I had in the fridge. So that's the fun thing about doing this too is maybe you don't have bacon or a certain kind of cheese. You can always just use whatever you have. Now you can kind of see here on the bottom, it's getting a little clumpy. We're doing good, a little more flour. We're also gonna add salt and pepper to this and that is just to your taste. So if you like a lot of salt, I mean, sausage is generally pretty salty, so you probably don't wanna add too much salt, but I like pepper, so I'm probably gonna add a good amount of pepper. And you can see after I've added more flour, it's clumpier again. So time for more milk. Whoops, a little splash there. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna keep doing this and then I'll be back to show you what the final result looks like. All right. Okay, we're back. Here is our gravy. Now, if you don't want it this thick, you can certainly add more milk. I got a little creative and threw some bacon in there um, because a true, really good sausage gravy takes a while to develop flavor. Since we're just doing this quickly, you didn't have a huge amount of flavor. So I did put a lot of pepper, a little bit of salt. We're just gonna put that off to the side for a second. And then I also took out our pizza crust that is pre-baked. And in my oven, it took about eight minutes, um, but you just wanna watch it until it gets a little golden brown. So I'm gonna set this one off to the side as well. And we're gonna cook our eggs. Let's actually move this over here. Okay. Now, our eggs, I'm actually using seven. So the recipe calls for six, but I think that seven is gonna cover the area a little bit more. So we're whisking our seven eggs and two and a half tablespoons of water together. This is just like scrambling eggs. If you've ever scrambled eggs, that's just what we're gonna do. And then those are gonna go on top. So. Let those get a little scrambled. Um, now, since again, sausage is salty, bacon is salty, I'm not gonna add salt to my eggs, but I'm gonna add a little pepper to give them some flavor. I love pepper, if I hadn't mentioned that. Okay, so that's pretty good. Then we're gonna take a nonstick skillet. Now, this recipe calls to put two tablespoons of olive oil down before you cook your eggs. I You can also use this again. It's our trusty pan spray, but I'll turn the pan on so it gets a little hot first. I usually cook my eggs 
starting over medium, eggs can cook pretty quickly. So just wanna be careful and keep our eye on them. And looks like two tablespoons of this olive oil does cover what over the pan. So get that all over. And then you can use, if you like to use like a wooden spoon to stir these around or a rubber spatula is really good if you're scrambling eggs. So we're gonna very lightly scramble them because they're gonna cook a little more. I'm gonna let that oil heat up for just a second. Get nice and warm. While that's happening, we can spread our sausage gravy. And then we have spatulas. Rubber spatulas are very handy. So I'm just gonna dump it all out on here. And we'll spread it out. This is a heavy pan. I need to switch hands. Good grip. Okay. I'm multitasking now, right? Okay. So we're gonna spread it out in a really thin layer. Don't do that at home. My parents probably won't like that. <laughs> I'm the one doing my own dishes, so I can do what I want. Okay, this is probably good. So I'm gonna add the eggs. And then we can spread out our gravy. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just trying to give us a, a little something to make this not so dry. You just wanna make sure that like the bits of sausage are spread out enough. And remember it's a pizza, so you don't have to go all the way to the edge if you want a little bit of crust. And our eggs are starting to kind of set at the edges. So once that goes for another 30 seconds or so, we'll start stirring those up. Okay, that looks pretty good. I've never made this before, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay. And look, perfect timing. I'm gonna check on our eggs. Since this is a lot of eggs, you know, this will take a little bit longer than what you're used to if you've scrambled eggs. So, but you can see they're starting to set. I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit since I was using this burner before. It's a little warm over here. And my oven, whenever I turn my oven on, it always makes the top of the stove pretty hot too. And we're gonna keep the oven at 400. We're getting there. You see that. Almost. You wanna be careful with eggs. You don't really wanna be eating raw eggs. So especially with this, they are gonna cook in the oven. So if they're a little wet, that's okay. But we wanna get most of this runniness out of here. And you can see like the bottom of this pan got hot very quickly. So the eggs on the bottom are cooking a lot faster than the ones on the top. So the stirring really helps. Okay. Maybe another 30 seconds and we'll be ready to spread our eggs out. Oh, and if I didn't mention, please wash your hands before you start cooking. I did do that, so I'm set. All right. I don't know if you can hear that like squishy sound. We don't want, we want to wait till that squishy sound kind of goes away. <laughs> don't want them. But you also don't want to overcook your eggs because that is no fun either. Okay, these are looking good to me. So this is what we kind of want where they're very lightly scrambled. 
little glossy. And then dump them out onto your pizza and we'll spread them out. Now, if you are using a rubber spatula, you wanna make sure it's one that is acceptable for high heat. And be careful also, because remember this was in the oven, it might still be hot. So we'll spread those eggs out. Yeah, I think the seven worked better than the six. Just gives us a little bit more coverage. And there might be some spots where there's more egg, less egg. That's a pizza, right? When you get it, when you order a pizza, sometimes there's more sausage on one part or not enough cheese on one part. Okay. Again, this is your creation. It can be whatever you want. Okay. Now we're gonna add our bacon. Again, if you're not using bacon, whatever other toppings you want here, veggies, just make sure, you know, that if you're using veggies that they're cooked, unless you like raw veggies, it's fine. So we're just gonna spread that out. Now the recipe calls for bacon bits, which you can buy already chopped in the store. I had bacon in the fridge, so I just cooked the bacon according to the package directions and chopped it. I like crispy bacon. Some people don't, again, it's gonna cook a little bit more, so it's all right. And then lastly, we will add our cheeses. Again, you can use whatever cheese you like. Even if you don't like cheese, you can use this too. I would say if you don't like cheese, just cook it a little bit less than what it calls for because really what we're doing here is just melting the cheese. Everything else is cooked already. Now it says one cup of each cheese. So I'm gonna eyeball it again because it doesn't matter, right? We can do what we want with this pizza. So I'm using sharp cheddar because I love sharp cheddar. It has a little bit of a bite to it, a little bit of a stronger cheese. Now, a regular cheddar will melt faster than the sharp. The sharper the cheddar, the longer it'll take to melt. Monterey Jack will melt pretty quickly. So I probably should have put the cheddar on top, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. This should only take maybe about another seven or eight minutes. And then we will have breakfast pizza for lunch or dinner. I'm having it for lunch. Okay. I, I'm a big fan of cheese, so I'm going to just throw a little bit more of the sharp cheddar on top. And we'll be all set to go. All right, I'll be back with the final product. All right, here it is, our breakfast pizza, ready to be eaten. Just let it cool down like a minute or two before you start cutting it. I would normally tell you to never cut something in a baking sheet because you're gonna scratch your baking sheet, but I think it may be the only way to cut this, so that it took in my oven about another seven to eight minutes so just watch it for you know sometimes you want the cheese a little crispier you don't like it so crispy so just keep an eye on it but there's your super easy breakfast pizza that you can adapt to make into whatever you like all right enjoy